Cabron, are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, has this ever happened to you? No. So my arrow is jammed in the bow and I can't shoot it anymore. I will have to follow the correct cleaning procedure. First I'm pulling out the magazine. Then I'm pulling back the string and the stuck arrow will be ejected out. Then I'm releasing the string forward again. Now I'm racking the bow again and I'm checking inside its chamber to make sure that it is clear. I'm releasing the string forward again and now I can shoot in the air and it's clear. And now I can load back on the magazine, I can rack the bow again and the next live round is loaded. <laughs> what did you expect? A serious video? Did you read the title? Come on! Okay, come on now for the serious part of the video. Let's go, vamonos! Before we begin, I want to give a grateful shout out to Thomas from Florida, slash Velocity. Thanks to your big order, I'm finally set to start my online shop now that all the needed details for payments and sending packages are settled. Thanks Tom! I literally gave everything I had. So now that I have finally made some more bows and arrows, and now that the heat wave is taking it a bit easy on us, I was able to finish this video. So let's get to it, shall we? If you have been around for some time, you will already know that my archery is not meant to be just historical, but it is meant to be advanced into our modern world with a realistic function within the military. Thinking about archery in terms of firearms prepares an archer for guns, but also introduces archery to a soldier, marine, etc. This way of thinking links the two worlds together and makes both weapons as just the two wings of the same hawk. This makes the practitioner adapt very fast in any different situation, no matter what equipment are available. Interlinking your knowledge helps you be able to instantly switch between your different weapons without any confusion as they all seem the same thing in your mentality. For example, I have seen masterful riflemen struggle with pistols or the reverse. Imagine how much more this could affect them in a case where only a handmade bow or spear is available. All because they didn't understand the common essence between the two. You understand the logic, so let's focus on the bow's anatomy and make a new terminology to link the two arts. Without the spirit of the art, no technique or terminology has any value. So in this case, both skills require the same goal, for their projectile to hit and penetrate the desired target. In lamer terms, stick goes boom or zoot and big bad wolf goes ah! It's funny, but that's all there is to it. Now, how you achieve this result is the whole art. Obviously, the bow represents the gun and the arrows represent the live rounds, the bullets. The distance between the bow's shaft and the string should be considered to be the chamber. For an arrow to fly away, it has to sit on the string and stand on the shaft. That's the space between the shaft and the string. So it's logical to understand that your technique is meant to feed the chamber with new rounds after every shot. The string can be the bolt, the trigger or the hammer. Your hand makes it act as it's one of the above. For aiming, you should think in terms of good old iron sights. Your front sight is the arrowhead. Your rear sights are the two lines of the arrow, its two borders in your vision. Its angle, its point of view in front of you, makes these two lines seem in two-dimensional terms as a long triangle where its two sides can be extended to meet each other at the vanishing point in the horizon. You can align these three points with your target and then all you have to do is rise or lower the angle of the arrow to reach the distance that you want. I will focus on the equivalent of a magazine a bit more and you will see why. The way a gun or bow is fed its projectiles can make the difference between the various types. You have seen me use different ways of handling my arrows and shooting them. All of these tiles are equally important to me as I would use them in different situations. Example, 
I want to snipe my target from a longer distance while I'm well hidden and I have all the time I need. I will treat my bow as a bolt action rifle. So my magazine will be these few arrows held on the bow while I pull them out one by one. That's my magazine and that's how it forces me to translate my bow into the firearms mindset. If I'm close enough and I'm already an exposed target, I have to be quick and very active. In this case, my magazine is a bunch of arrows held on my shooting hand and I can rapidly shoot them on my target. And just like that, my bow is acting as a semi or full lotto. The grunt craves for that one hit after emptying even a whole magazine if not more, while the sniper craves for that one precise first hit. The grunt finishes the job and secures the area but will not dare approach without the sniper support. The sniper won't dare go in a close proximity as he lacks the needed fast fire rate. You get my general point. But I will hold bundles of three arrows on my bow in such a way that I can pull them out easily. These are literally my other magazines on my vest so that I can reload my gun. In this case, bow. I'm aware of my magazines. In this case I have one, two, three. I can easily pull each one whenever I want. So I'm back here again. You can see what I mean. And in my mind, I'm aware what's my primary source of arrows. In this case, the first magazine. To conclude the magazine topic, my mind knows where my direct source of arrows is while I'm also carrying much more on other places, ready to be pulled and used as the new primary source. And just like that, I'm eliminating the possible delay of confusion. Now, the arrows are the live rounds, as I have already said, but let's break it down into bullet terms to progress the art even further. Some common knowledge. A live round is consisted by, first, the cartridge, the brass casing that holds the gunpowder inside, but also has the perfect shape to fit in the chamber and achieve the optimal performance. It even has an actual knock. The bottom side is shaped to be held by the bolt. Sounds more and more like the natural evolution of the arrow to me. The cartridge is also consisted by the bullet, of course, the actual projectile that is sent away onto the target. It's funny when I see animations of guns shooting the entire cartridge out of them. So, back to the bullet. That's your arrowhead. What part of the arrow do you want to hit the target with? The main shaft? The fletching? The knock? Or the arrowhead? I'm explaining that the sky is blue here, I know. And last but not least, on the back side of the round we can find the primer. The little part that makes it possible for the bullet to go boom. <laughs> When the hammer or needle hits the primer, the cap, it ignites the powder inside the casing and the burning gases build up pressure so fast that they send the bullet out with an explosion. The rifling on the gun's barrel makes the bullet spin around itself and causes it to fly accurately far away. The rifling is simulated by the helix fletching at the back of the shaft. The shaft is the casing in a way. It holds everything together and determines the flight of the shot as it holds all of the weight and length of the arrow. Suppose that you have a detachable arrowhead and the shaft of the arrow is tied on the string. So when you shoot it, the arrowhead will fly forward like a dart while the shaft will remain behind. By that mechanism being proven possible, even if not used because there is no real reason to do that, the shaft simulates fully the casing. Is the same logic in our minds. The primer is the knock. It holds exactly the same purpose and function as the primer. Even my knockless arrow type is a knock, simply different than the V-shaped notch. So no knock, no flight. No primer, no flight. Now we have arrows, so in this case, no case is ejected out. Also, I'm a poet. <laughs> As bullets have different types, so do arrowheads. What is the purpose of your arrow? To penetrate armor? To hook itself inside? To cut tendons and tissue? To hit with a heavy impact instead of penetrating? Each type has its function at different situations. For example, a heavy bow with an armor piercing tip ends up doing the same damage to an armored enemy as a very light short bow does to a non-armored one. The entire impact is held back by the armor 
and ends up hitting the target enough to do the needed job. Over penetration makes no sense when you get the same result either way. That is why the police has to use hollow point bullets in urban locations to prevent over penetration and endangering invalid targets. It even has a safe and fire mode. All you have to do is place your index finger on the arrow just like that and now it's locked in place. Well, it's still locked. So even with one hand it stays like that and I can walk around, do tasks and all that. And if I suddenly have to shoot at something that is coming, you know, a danger, I grab the knock, I release the index finger and I'm good to go. Let me show you. Safe mode. I see something, a danger, an enemy, and suddenly, shoot. Just like that. And so from this, it went to this. <laughs> In final conclusion, be aware of your bow's anatomy and it will reward you with instinctive speed and accuracy. Be aware of what is your current primary source of arrows and pay attention to the next point while I'm giving a small sample of what videos will follow up as this video will be the base for them. When boomsticks, firearms came along, archery was pushed aside for obvious reasons. So this gap transformed archery into a sport and maybe a hunting tool sometimes. It is not lethal in the sense it was back in the day. It is not a tool of war in our modern mentalities. So it does not awaken our warrior instincts because it lacks that old purpose. That mentality moved into firearms. By translating firearm mentality into archery, we are restoring the warrior spirit, that lethal sense, back into the bow and arrow. It is a mental hack that is going to awaken your predator's instincts. You'll be surprised with the results while under this mode's influence. Your speed and accuracy will increase out of the blue. This bow is silent. This bow can be made anywhere, anytime. It can't be regulated. Well, folks, that was it for now. See you in the next one. Oh yeah, one last thing. This is a really wide, huge t-shirt. and just hangs down like that. And if I do this... Whoop, I'm revealing to you that I'm not really that fat. Just a little bit chubby, maybe. No, no, this is all muscle. <laughs> Let them underestimate us. This is the optimal athletic body.